Within just five years, Red Bull and Max Verstappen moved from plucky underdogs to becoming a formidable force in Formula 1. Their meteoric ascension to the sport's top was made possible by the team's willingness to take risks. What are these risks? Stay tuned to find out. As a result of the rule changes that were implemented for the 2022 Formula 1 season, Red Bull was able to solidify its position as the team to beat. Red Bull clearly did a better job than anybody else at managing the transition to the new ground effect car designs that were used in Formula 1 this season. Thanks to the technical foundations they have built, they now have the ability to do what Mercedes did in the previous generation from 2014 onwards, attain total dominance over an entire era of racing. Red Bull have taken firm control of both the drivers and constructors' standings thanks to Ferrari's inability to make the most of their F175. Red Bull's Max Verstappen has now won five races in a row, and the RB18 he is driving appears seemingly unbeatable over a race distance. As a result, Verstappen has extended his advantage at the top of the Drivers' Championship to 116 points over Charles Leclerc of Ferrari. Mathematically, Verstappen can win his second Formula 1 championship at the upcoming race in Singapore, provided he extends his lead by a total of 17 points. In addition to this, Verstappen is getting very close to breaking the record for the most victories in a single season. With six races still to go in the season, he already has 11 victories under his belt, placing him only two victories short of matching the record set by Michael Schumacher and Sebastian Vettel. The ease with which Verstappen has swept towards the title in 2022 is a stark contrast to the difficulty with which he won his first championship last year, which was won on the final lap after a tense, season-long fight against Lewis Hamilton. In the past four races, Verstappen has not started any higher than seventh on the grid, except for the Dutch GP, in which he had pole position. Yet, he has recovered to keep his winning streak going each time. Red Bull's F1 team's success can be attributed, in part, to the years of faith and investment that they made in Verstappen. When Max Verstappen was still a young lad and had just begun his career in motorsport, Red Bull took a significant risk by signing the Dutch driver. This was the beginning of Red Bull's ascent to the top of the motorsport world. The dominance of Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes in the turbo hybrid era was brought to an end by the Dutchman. An intense fight for the championship that lasted all season culminated in a nail-biting pass on the final lap of the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Verstappen received acclaim from drivers and fans alike. Yet Red Bull saw these results coming a long time ago and went for the Dutch driver. Marco praised the Red Bull's unconventional strategy as the reason for their success. He said, The criticism was to be expected, but in all honesty, it was a calculated risk. We gave Max all the appropriate tests at Toro Rosso within the regulations. Of course, it's always a risk because drivers who are successful in junior categories don't necessarily have to be successful in Formula 1. But during the conversation I had with him, I was convinced that he was ahead of his time. Both physically and mentally, he was strong enough for F1. We never doubted our decision. You're enjoying this video, right? You definitely don't want to miss out on other amazing videos. So all you have to do is hit the subscription button. It's that easy. Thanks for doing that. Let's move on. The no risk, no fun mentality played a role in Red Bull's decision to promote Max to Formula One when he was just 17 years old. Red Bull faced criticism for letting such an inexperienced driver on the track. In many countries, he couldn't legally drive to the track. The confidence shown by Red Bull has been rewarded. Max Verstappen is one of the youngest champions in the history of the sport, and he appears to be as promising as ever heading into 2023. He is now an important part of the Red Bull F1 team. Red Bull team principal Christian Horner said, He's a huge element of our team. He's grown with us, and he's really becoming that complete driver. After last year's World Championship, again, he's just grown. That inner confidence, that pressure is almost off his back. Earlier this year, Max Verstappen signed a bumper five-year contract extension with Red Bull in a deal that will keep him on the team until at least the end of 2028. The current overarching regulations for Formula 1 will remain in place until at least 2026, which is when the engine formula is scheduled for a significant overhaul. The likes of Mercedes and Ferrari will, of course, be giving Red Bull a lot of competition in their pursuit. But when one team has such a clear advantage at the beginning of a new era, it is extremely difficult to overturn them. Also, F1's relatively new annual cost cap means that neither the Silver Arrows nor the Scuderia can simply spend their way back into contention. Due to the fact that the new rules have just been implemented, it is possible that an opposing team may soon discover a clever innovation that will completely change the game. Come 2023, it is certainly possible that other teams could mimic and possibly even improve upon the RB18 strengths.
However, given the current state of things, it will take a monumental effort from any other team or driver to haul Max Verstappen and Red Bull back in any time soon. This is because a superhuman athlete who an eminently efficient organization supports is a competitor who is nearly impossible to beat. Red Bull has a history of taking significant risks that have helped propel its Formula 1 team into a period of unparalleled dominance. Red Bull is taking yet another risk, but this time it isn't about signing a new driver, it is about how they will run their affairs in the coming new era of F1 racing in 2026. What am I talking about? The present generation of Formula 1 engines will be phased out in 2026 and replaced by ones that are much more efficient produce net zero CO2 emissions from their exhaust, and generate three times as much electrical power as the current generation. In spite of the fact that the regulations will result in lower development costs, improved safety cell design, and an engine that is less harmful to the environment, the resulting vehicles will still be capable of producing more than 1,000 brake horsepower while consuming less fuel. After Red Bull's deal with Porsche didn't go through, Horner has made it clear that the company is able to go through the entire process on its own, and the PU will be badged as a Red Bull when it ultimately competes in 2026. This season was Red Bull's powertrain's first official season. The team has achieved great success during the year, including 12 race victories, 5 pole positions, and 8 Grand Prix faster slaps. However, the 2026 season will be the first one in which the engines will have been built, developed, and engineered from the ground up at the RBPT factories. The PU project is a huge undertaking. This is what the team principal of Red Bull, Christian Horner, had to say about it. I think as soon as we made the decision, there was a full commitment and it's no small undertaking. Some people think we're completely mad to take on the likes of Ferrari, Mercedes and Renault and potentially even Honda starting from scratch. But that is exactly the Red Bull way, to achieve the impossible. That was said about designing and building a chassis. RBP is going to be an obviously pricey endeavor. The company is already paying for a Honda supply and additional costs for any development that can be done while still adhering to the standards. Because of the PU financial regulations, the process of constructing one from the start is no longer a bottomless pit of financial responsibility. In addition to the necessary funding, it is important to consider whether or not they have the necessary personnel to make Red Bull competitive when the new regulations come into effect in 2026. Red Bull's technical director, Pierre Wack, said, You put everything in place. You see the building they have put together, the number of dinos, the number of people they have now. In this area, the learning curve is very deep, but the lead time for parts is very long. The acquisition of the Honda setup by Red Bull was followed by the company's announcement of many high-profile hires of professionals from the engine department of their F1 competitor, Mercedes HPP. WAC believes that the quality of these new additions to the RBPT is one of the most important factors in determining how well the new regulation engines perform. He said, From what I see, the desire, motivation, and the quality of the people we have in our team, I think it looks good. It is evident that hiring top personnel from Mercedes is a shortcut, but putting everything into operation is still going to be a significant challenge. What are your thoughts on the enormous risk that Red Bull is planning to take regarding the Formula 1 2026 engine regulation? Let us know in the comments section below. That will be all for today's video. Thanks for staying tuned. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and notification bell so that you always get to watch more amazing videos like this. See you in the next video.